Just have your way, Lord, you are welcome in this place, Lord, you are welcome in this place, Lord, you To me, speak to me. I am your willing vessel, Lord Jesus. Help me to remember that I am an oracle of you. I'm not here to perform, I'm not here to impress. I'm here to espouse the truth and minister to the broken and minister to, to, to your heart, God. I'm here to please you and only, Lord Jesus. Hey guys, um, well today it is a part two of the seduction of sin and it is called um, the inebriation of sin. Uh, when I say inebriation, I mean total loss of your senses total loss of what you're doing and total loss of who you are and when I say inebriation I don't mean just alcohol or drugs I mean you can be inebriated by anything you can be inebriated by yourself you can be inebriated by shopping you can be inebriated by a man you can be inebriated by a woman you can be inebriated by both you could be inebriated by anything. Um, so when I talk about the inebriation of sin, it's basically the loss of your true self and who you are. Because uh, so many people out there have lost themselves in themselves. They've, they've put on uh, um, a a inauthentic picture of who they are in place of this um, in place of who they really are and they hide behind their screens they hide behind profiles and personas and today my goal with this um, part two of this sermon is to um, get, make you understand that to be soberly minded is what Christ wants. And when I say sober, I don't mean free from alcohol or drugs. 
I mean, to know who you are, to have focus and to have um, purpose and to know what you are um, here to do, called to do, designed to do, and to be able to um, to be able to um, assess that clearly to people and to yourself. Um, so, um, last week I had mentioned a scripture in Proverbs that this week I am going to read. Now, warning here, I am not the best reader I can read, but I'm kind of slow at it. Um, so I will take my time and read uh, this scripture in Proverbs 7 um, from, from 4 to 20, Proverbs 5 from 4 to 23. Um, so there you go. Just let me get the scripture up here. Okay, so I'm going to start at, um, actually, instead of starting at 5, I'm going to start at 6. Okay, it says, at the window of my house, I look down through the lattice. I saw among the simple. I noticed among the young men there was a youth that had no sense that had no sense. He was going down the street near the corner walking walking along the direction of her house. at twilight as the day was fading as the dark night set in then came the, wom the woman to meet him Dressed like a prostitute with a crafty, with, with crafty intent. She is unruly and defiant. Her feet never, never stay at home. Now in the street, now in the squares, at every corner she lurks. She, she, she took him, 
and kissed him. And with a brazen face said, Today, today I have fulfilled my vows. I have food and I have, I have food from my fellowship offering at home. So, so I come out to meet you. I, I looked for you and have found you. I have covered my bed. with linens from Egypt have perfumed my bed with myrrh and cinnamon come let's deeply come come let's drink deeply of love until morning let's enjoy ourselves with love my husband is not home he has gone on a long journey He took his purse filled with, with money and he will not be home until the morn. He will not be home until the full moon, sorry. With persuasive words, words she led him astray, astray. With sedu she seduced him with smooth talk. At, at once he followed her like an ox going to the slaughter. like dear Stephen into a noose like any an arrow pierces his liver like a bird darting into a snare little knowing it will cost him his life Oh my gosh, this scripture is so powerful um, because it really brings home uh, what sin does. I think of the woman in this scripture as a, per a, perso a, a personification of sin, um, as a prototype of sin because that's how sin works. Um, it really tempts you with what you want. Like sin doesn't tempt you with what you don't want. The thing about sin is it knows what you want. It knows your desires, your in 
your innermost desires. It knows where you're weakest. It knows where you just fall short. And it preys on that. And sometimes, no matter how you try and uh, protect yourself, it still uh, can get in. Um, but the thing about it is, um, not that it won't get in, but the thing about it to me is, actually, not how you keep it from getting in, but what do you do when it, when it does get in? Um, for me personally, let me take this down first of all so I can see it. Uh, for me personally is to be honest about it. Um, remember I said last week um, that in isolation uh, things fester sin fester and grows but in, when you shed light on something it gives it less credence and in community you can fight things um, better I didn't say that last week but I said something like that get around uh, people that you can talk to um, get around faith believing brothers and sisters that you can trust and say I am really struggling with this. I am really feeling inebriated by this. This um, certain thing is making me lose my mind. And no matter who you are, you have so something that will make you fall to your knees. Um, this is why I'm a proponent of not judging people because we all have things that if um, we all have things that we do or that we think that are adverse to the word of God. So if we judge another person for their thing, um, we will be judged for our thing and we'll be judged harshly. Um, uh, the Bible says, judge not lest ye be judged. And with, with whatsoever measure you meet it, it will be measured to you. So if you judge people for acting on their sin and, be, and, being, uh, and being weak in some area, um, be careful of that because it might come back to, I don't want to say haunt you, but it might come back to you as well. Um, our sins may not be the same. What we're tempted by may not be the same, but we're all tempted by something and we all need the same cross. We all need the same blood of Jesus. We all need to confess our sins every day. Um, and we all need each other to, to boost each other up. Um, last week I talked a bit about, um, the wounded saints that we have left behind. If you have, um, wounded somebody in the church, go back and make it right. Because life is too short to stay angry, to stay wounded, to stay like, to stay like, um, proud like you didn't do anything. I know it sometimes can be hard when you, when you have been the one that have wronged the person, but it's better to be open with the person and say, I'm sorry, rather than to let that fester and to let that be in pain. And if you were a person that was wounded by someone in your church, find that person, talk it out with that person and deal with that person. And if you, and if you don't feel comfortable yet to find, 
uh, find that person and talk it out. At least write it down, write a letter to that person or uh, where you can get your feelings out and get them organized. When, when you get your feelings out, you can, um, you can objectively look at them. This doesn't work for all situations, but for most situations in my life, I found that when I write something down or can think through a situation or can talk through a situation, it makes it so much better. And then I can think with a clear head. Because when something happens, I don't know about you, but for me, I see red and I shut down. I, I shut all the way down and you it'll t it'll take several hammers to get me to open up but when I can uh, write it down and think through it clearly and talk through it clearly with friends then I get to see different perspectives and it's not easy it's not easy it, it can it is quite difficult but at the end, it, there's such a sense of freedom. You'll be glad you did it. It's so much better than festering and whether you are the one that hurt or the one that was hurt, it's so much better than festering and having animosity towards that person and giving yourself health problems. Because stress is one of the leading causes of health problems. And unforgiveness and all that anger, it could be causing your health problems. And the Lord wants you to prosper and be in good health. And I think that spiritual, emotional, physical, mental health. He wants you to be in good health and always and I was also thinking about this too I don't know if you've ever seen the movie The Wizard of Oz most people have if you haven't see it it's a pretty good movie um, there's a part in The Wizard of Oz where they're in this poppy field and the wit the Wicked Witch of the West uh, sees Dorothy and the Tin Man and her friends in this poppy field and she casts a spell to make them fall asleep so that they would know what was going on. And I think like the Wicked Witch of the West, the devil has cast a spell on us to the point, to the point where, where we're just we've fallen asleep on what we what we should be um, concentrating on as believers, and he's put little insignificant things in our way, like um, should we baptize in Jesus' name or Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, or should we should we do this kind of music in church or that kind of music in church? He's put all this, all these different things that detract from the original gospel in our way so that people outside of the church, um, all they see when they see churches are people that fight all the time. And I think it's a demonic attack against the church and I think until we can unify until we can uh, celebrate our differences not ignore them but celebrate our cultural differences cele celebrate our differences in gender celebrate our different strengths and different weaknesses we will not get anywhere and I think that's a way to wake up from this inebriation of sin is to just unify and because 
if we can unify together and help each other up, there won't be so many people struggling. And the people that are struggling will get healing and help. And I think that's what they need. And when people see the church actually being the church and actually being a vehicle for healing and help instead of arguing and fighting, they don't want to come into the church and inebriation and drunkenness and all of that will lessen. It won't stop because we we are in sin and shaping and iniquity but it will lessen and then when it lessens um the lord will get the glory um when we understand how strong unity is and how strong love is that's when this whole sin thing will turn around both in our individual lives and in our corporate church lives. I think the reason why so many people struggle with habitual sin is because they feel that no one cares. They feel that they have no one to turn to. They fear being judged. They fear being ridiculed. And the truth is, the reason why they fear it is because it has happened to them. It's because they went to the church and they were ridiculed. They were judged harshly. They were told that they were too uh, dirty for God or they had too much sin for God or God did, didn't like their lifestyle or whatever. But the truth is we all have something that God won't like. We all, there's a verse in the Bible that will nail us all to the wall. You could say that, you know, uh, being gay is a sin against God, and it is. I'm not saying it isn't. But also, gossip is a sin too. Slander is a sin, and all those things that we think are called little sins. They all are sins, and we all have fallen short. And we need to realize as the church that the cross is for every single person. Black, white, Latino, um, Asian, East Asian, but Latin American. The cross is for all of us. And we all need to bow at the cross daily and repent for our sins and turn away because the reason why is is not so much to get to heaven it is but um for me it's more about when you're in habitual sin you miss your purpose you miss your destiny that's what sin does. It deters you from purpose and from destiny. Because I, I believe once you're saved, once you're, you've accepted the Lord into your life, I believe that, that heaven is a guarantee. Um, but, but you could have accepted Christ into your life but the, your sin takes you away from your original purpose and you don't realize that there, there are people waiting for you to write that book, waiting for you to achieve that purpose, waiting for you to, you know, lose that weight or whatever because there are people that you need to affect with your purpose. Every purpose is, is for another person. It's not just for you. It's not just for your family. It, it's, it's like a domino effect. 
fact. If you find your purpose, other people will find their purpose. And your purpose will piggyback on someone else's purpose. So let's say if you're a business leader and you're good at like um, running a business. So you write a book about how to um, start a business properly and avoid the pitfalls. Somebody reads that book and starts starts a hair business and starts doing hair and then one day in the salon while talking to the hairdresser that read your book they they get an inspired idea and it piggybacks and piggybacks so no one's purpose is individual it all is connected and if you don't achieve your purpose those other people will not achieve theirs so the Lord wants me to say that he loves you he's not mad at you for the mistakes you've made he understands you he knows you but he wants you to achieve more than you've been achieving in your life so far he wants you to write that book he wants you to lose that weight because there are people riding on you finding your destiny and living out your purpose and your true calling and your calling could be just as small as being a mom your calling is just basically what God has you to do um, it, could, it could be as small as being a mom it could be as small as uh, driving a school bus it can be it can be just anything so when it comes to purpose and destiny and calling I would say just don't wait for the big thing this big whole like God wants you to do this start where you are and he will lead you you may have several purposes along the way until you get to your ultimate one and how do you know that you're in your purpose? It's when you wake up and can't think of doing anything else but that thing. Until you get to that place, however, start where you are. Start doing whatever. Start volunteering until you get to that thing that leads to that thing, to the thing. And you will get there. You will get there. And when you do, people will be benefiting from all your experiences. So you may think if you're 16 working at the mall, this is not my purpose. I don't want to do that. But who knows who you meet, who you'll meet, who knows what God will teach you working at that mall. So you do it. And and eventually he will lead you to where you're supposed to be. So guys, I thank you for watching this video. And I thank you for um, watching all my videos. Um, and I'll see, I'll see you next week. Take care. Be blessed. For he has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his home. Amen. Mm -hmm.
Okay, guys, I'll see you next week. Bye. Oh, he has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his. Holy name. Bye, God bless.